What's up everyone, Jeff Everhart from WP Engine here. I wanted to take a second and make a quick video explaining how the WordPress template hierarchy works inside of Faust.js. This is one of our most popular framework features and it's one of those things that just makes traditional WordPress developers feel right at home creating templates using JavaScript. So let's get started. So to get started, we'll talk a little bit about how Next.js handles routing and compare that to the way that WordPress and its traditional PHP templates handle routing. So Next.js, the JavaScript framework that Faust is built on top of, utilizes something called page-based routing. So we have this directory in our project called Pages. And inside of the Pages directory, we have an assortment of files and different folders that essentially determine the routing structure of our application. So this example.js file corresponds to an example page on our website. When we hit this route, it matches this pattern and Next.js runs all of the code inside of this sort of page file and returns us this HTML. Uh, now we can also do dynamic routing in Next.js. So we see, for example, we have this posts directory with a slug.js file with these brackets around it. That tells Next.js that, hey, anything that matches this pattern is actually going to be dynamic. So I need to pull out that data so I can use it inside of my template. So if we visit a route that matches that pattern, like post slash here, and we refresh the page, we'll see that uh, if we go to that particular template, um, you know, at some point down here, we're actually getting out that uh, slug parameter from the route. And so if we change this from here to there, uh, we should see that update in our page. And now traditionally, this is how a lot of headless WordPress developers have approached getting data, right? I might create these dynamic route segments where a slug or a database ID is passed in, and then I would use that slug or database ID to go get some stuff from WordPress. Okay, so that's sort of the essence of how Next.js handles routing. So let's flip over to our WordPress side, and let's talk about that for a second. So WordPress, as we're creating pieces of content, uh, WordPress creates for us individual URIs that match that content. Also, some people call them permalinks, some people call them URLs, um, whatever you wanna call it. It's this resource locator for a particular piece of content. Now in a traditional PHP theming system, uh, like WordPress uses, traditional WordPress uses, right? if I visit that particular URL, it's gonna look up some information about that piece of content in the database, and then make a determination on what template to display. And then that template is actually gonna be the thing that pulls together all of the different pieces of data that are needed to construct my sort of end user page that gets sent to the browser. Um, so what we were finding as we were developing Faust is that headless developers were spending just a ton of time over here in Next.js recreating these routes. If they had a custom post type, maybe there would be a folder for that post type and then an individual route for, I don't know, say star launches slash, you know, whatever this rocket launches name was. Or if they had categories or tag pages that they wanted displayed, you'd have a categories folder and then a category slug. And you had to do all of this wiring up and all of this plumbing just to get started building with WordPress. So Faust flips that paradigm on its head just a little bit and leans a little bit harder into the way that WordPress templating works in a really unique way. So what we do here is essentially we lean into this catch-all route called the WordPress node. You can still use your page-based routes as you saw in my example. So if I create slash example and that matches a page, hey, Next.js is gonna serve that just like it traditionally would. But if we wanna lean more into WordPress's routing and the URIs that WordPress creates, we have this WordPress node catch-all. Now it's means catch-all because pretty much by the time that a route request has gotten to this node, uh, that's what it's meant to do. It's meant to respond to everything else. If it doesn't match something up here, it will get passed to the WordPress node. And then Faust is gonna do a couple of things behind the scenes to make your development life a lot easier. So we can see here that inside of get static props, which is sort of the data fetching methodology that Next.js uses, we're calling get WordPress props. Now what this is doing is behind the scenes, it's making a super lightweight qu query out to your GraphQL endpoint called the seed query. And this seed query just gets some basic data about the URI. It says, hey, I've got this URI, 
Now tell me some information about it. Is it a post? Is it a page? What type of content is it? And then from there, uh, Faust actually makes some determinations about what particular template is going to get shown. Uh, and we can see that here where we render this page. So instead of rendering uh, a bunch of HTML inside of here, we're just using this WordPress template component to resolve our seed query uh, to a particular template. And so uh, we can see that an example here, like if I click through to the home page, we can see that behind the scenes, Faust is looking at that URI, right? And resolving that URI to a set of possible templates. And this is made to mimic the WordPress template hierarchy structure. So the most specific template in here is front page, right? If this is my slash like root URL, uh, I'm maybe rendering it with front page uh, .js. Um, if I click into say like a page about us, we'll get a totally different set of templates. We can see there that for the that URL, we're getting page about us, page 92, page singular and index. And again, this is a hierarchy. So it's going to come out to your WP templates folder and then match whichever template uh, is the highest specificity there. So, right. So if we look over here at the templates that we have for our particular thing, we don't have a page about us template. We don't have a page 92 template, but we do have a page template. So if we open that up, that's what this looks like. Um, and this is where sort of all of the goodness happens to render your Faust route. Um, and there are three sort of main components to a Faust template. Uh, no pun intended. The first one is obviously our page component, right? If we open this up, this is our React code. This accepts some props, and then it basically renders all of your, your page UI. Um, and so that's part one, is we need a page component, right? That's, what's get, that's what gets rendered. Then uh, part two of that is that we can also specify our particular query. So when Faust loads this template as a part of the WordPress template component, it's also going to run this query against your GraphQL uh, endpoint. So what this is, this is how we provide data to our page component. We essentially say, here's all the data that I need to render this UI, go and get it for me. And then the last thing that we have here um, is we also have some variables. So if we want to pass in different variables to our GraphQL query that we extract maybe from um, Next.js, or maybe we've modified in this case, the seed query, we can pull out little pieces of information like this, for example. Obviously I have this multilingual site, each post or page has a translation in a different language. And so when I render that poster page in a different language, I want my menu to be contextually aware as well. So that's sort of what I'm doing here. I'm, I went and used a, um, if I come up here to plugins, Faust also has a plugin system that allows me to sort of modify and extend these things. And we'll take a look at that example right here. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually including some additional data inside of my Faust application seed query. Uh, to pull out some of that language uh, data from the particular URI, right? If if I have this page, uh, which I do over here, if I go back into um, my WordPress pages, you can see, you know, I have that um, Spanish uh, language about page, and that has cr already created us this uh, locale aware URI where we've got ES slash uh, the name of the post. And then Faust uses that URI, sends it to uh, GraphQL. We get back some language information, right? So I can use that as a part of my template, like I did down here in page.js to render a contextually aware menu. So I look at the language um, and then we're here sort of determining that menu location, right? So do I want my primary English menu, my Spanish menu, my German menu? I can do some of those things dynamically. Um, but I can also actually extend Faust a little bit further than that and add specific templates that I want to resolve. Um, so here we can see I've loaded up my Spanish page, right? Uh, my ES locale. And what I'm doing here is I'm using a separate filter to filter my possible templates list. Um, so if, you know, the seed node language code equals Spanish um, and we're looking at a page, you know, and it has the type page, then I'm basically just popping a new potential template onto that array of templates. So we can see here that the most specific one that I have is this ES page template. And you can see that I've got that registered out here in my WP templates folder. So what that lets me do is create this really nice and flexible templating system where I can essentially create templates for a variety of different conditions. And so if I wanted to have something that was specific to just the Spanish page, I could do that as well. 
So a lot of flexibility, um, but again, all built around the idea of leaning into the URIs that WordPress creates for you and then rendering those templates based on that. And again, it provides this really nice developer experience where a bunch of this stuff gets loaded automatically. So as our page template or our ES page template gets loaded, uh, Faust is going to take your component, take its query and your variables, make that GraphQL call for you, and then just resolve that data into your components props. So you don't have to manually fetch anything. You sort of just define those queries and those variables as properties of your template. And then Faust handles all of that magic behind the scenes so that inside your template, you can just basically write some React code with the data that you need and display your pages. So awesome. I hope that video helps clarify how the templating hierarchy system works in Faust and what it can do to help you bridge the gap between WordPress and your Next.js projects. Thanks for watching.